All right, in this video, we are going to do this funny question, IMSA arithmetic sample test. And the difficulty of this test is either easy or very easy. These are basically the simplest questions you will get in the test. You will never actually see a test this easy, but if you've just started preparing for this, this is probably one of the best places to start because these are the easier difficulty questions that you definitely want to know and practice before you start doing harder questions that you'll see in your actual test. And I'm going to release multiple tests on the IMSA of all kinds of different difficulties ranging from easy to very difficult. And as you'll see, the tests will be pretty similar, but the difficulty of each question will get harder and harder. I'm going to do this entire test without a calculator. I would suggest for you to do the same. Although sometimes in the IMSA test, you will be given a basic calculator for certain questions. So let's start with question number one. I'm doing 459 plus 367, I just want to line them up directly above one another. Also, one more thing I want to note is that there's usually multiple choice answers for all these questions, but I'm just going to do it without the multiple choice answers because I want to basically just have you practice and see whether you can solve the questions or not. Uh, selecting the right answer is not usually too difficult from the provided options. Start with this, nine plus seven is 16. And then I'm going to carry over one over here. Five plus six is 11, plus the one is 12. And I'm going to carry over another one. Then one plus four plus three is just eight. So my final answer for question number one is just 826. Let's go to question number two, which is subtraction. We have seven, three, two, minus four, five, eight. So again, I start on the right for subtraction. I can't do two minus eight. So what I have to do is I have to cancel the three, turn it into a two, and then I got to borrow one over here. So now I have 12 minus eight. 12 minus eight is just four. Then I'm going to do two minus five, but I can't subtract two from five. I'm going to cancel the seven, turn it into a six and borrow another one. So that becomes 12 again. 12 minus five is just seven. And then six minus four, that you can do instantly, it's two. So my solution for this second question is just 274. Go to question number three, which is multiplication. So again, I'll just line it up like this. For multiplication, the first thing I want to do is I want to multiply this term by this term on the right. So seven times three is 21. I'll write the one over here and I'll carry the two. And then six times three is 18 plus the two that I carried, that's just 20. So I did seven times this and then six times this. Now I'm going to do seven times two and six times two. But before I do that, you want to add a placeholder here of a zero. So you can also cancel out this two so it doesn't confuse you anymore. So seven times two is 14. I'm going to write the four over here. I'm going to carry the one over here. So that's why I cancel the two so that wouldn't confuse you. And then six times two is 12 plus one is 13. Then I'm going to add up these two rows over here. So one plus zero is one, zero plus four is zero, two plus three is five, and then one is just one. So my final answer for this question is one, five, four, one. And let's go to question number four, which is division. Now you might be able to do that mentally, but I'm going to show you the steps using long division because this is important 
for difficult questions that we might see later in this test and something that we'll definitely see in harder tests later on. So first I say if 12 can go into my first value, 12 can't go into one, so I'm not going to try that. What about into 14? 12 goes one time into 14. One times 12 is just 12, so I'm going to subtract here. 14 minus 12 is just two. And then I'll bring down the four, so I have 24. 12 goes two times into 24. Two times 12 is 24. And then if I subtract them, I'm just left with zero. So my final answer for this question is quotient on the top, which is 12. All right, let's go to question number five. I'm going to grab a different sheet of paper to solve this one because I don't have a space over there. Number five says to simplify that fraction to its lowest terms. So if I want to simplify a fraction, you want to see if you can divide the top and the bottom by the same number. Now, if you're good at math, you can do big numbers and you can get the answer a lot quicker, but I'm going to assume that you are struggling with math. And in a question like this, if you want to figure out what you can divide the two numbers by, always start with the lowest numbers like two, three, five, and seven. Those basically four numbers should help you simplify every question. Always start with two, and if that doesn't work, try the rest of them. So can I divide these numbers by two? They're both even, so yes, I can divide them by two. 36 divided by two is 18. You should be able to do that mentally. 48 divided by two is 24. Let's follow the same process. Can I divide both these numbers by two? They're both even, so yes. 18 divided by two is nine. 24 divided by two is 12. Let's try the process again. Can I divide both these numbers by two? Nope, nine is an odd number. So now I'll try to divide by three. Can I divide both these numbers by three? Yes, I can. Nine divided by three is three. 12 divided by three is four. Then keep continuing. I can't divide either of these numbers by three, five, seven. Can't divide by two either, which means that that is my final solution reduced down to the lowest form possible. Let's go to question number six next. We are adding two fractions over here. So we have five over eight plus one over four. When adding two fractions, you want to make sure that you have the lowest common denominator in the question. To add or subtract two fractions, they have to have the same denominator. These two denominators are not the same, but how can I make the same? Well, I know that I can turn a four into an eight by multiplying by two. So I can multiply this by two, but if I multiply the bottom by two, I have to multiply the top by two as well. Again, when I do harder questions and later tests, I'll show you how to do that, these steps for harder questions. But for now, let's just assume that it's a simple question like this. So I just have five over eight plus two over eight, which is just seven divided by eight. And that would be my final solution to this question. Go to question number seven next, which is subtraction. Seven over nine minus four over nine. I already have a common denominator in this question, so I can just do my subtraction instantly. Seven minus four is three. Leave the bottom the exact same, which is nine. But now something that you have to pay attention to over here is that this fraction can be reduced just like how we did in question number five. And whenever you have solutions as fractions, 
you should always check your final solution to see whether it can be reduced or not, because you might not notice this in your multiple choice solutions. To reduce, I can divide them both by three, which gives me a final solution of one over three. Let's go to question number eight. Question number eight is decimal multiplication. So I have 0 0.75 times 0 0.4. A lot of different ways you can do this question, but whenever I do decimal multiplication, I write down the values as whole numbers when doing my multiplication. So that's just 75 and that's just four. So I'm just gonna start by doing 75 times four. Five times four is 20. I have two carried on there. Seven times four is 28 plus two is 30. So now I know that 75 times four is 30. So I'm just going to write the answer here for now. Then I'm going to count the number of decimal places that I have in total in this question. So let's look at the first term I have one two decimal places over here, and I have one decimal place over here. So if I do it in total, I should have two plus one, which is three decimal places in my final solution. Right now, I have no decimal places. The decimal point is right here. So I'm going to count three decimal places. One, two, three. So the decimal point is actually here which means that my final answer is actually 0 0.300, which is basically the exact same as 0 0.3. Go to question number nine next. We have decimal division in question number nine, which is a bit difficult, but I'm going to show you how I do decimal division. So I have 3.6 divided by 0 0.9. Now, again, this question can be done mentally. It's not too difficult, but I'm going to show you how you would do it if, it was, if the numbers were basically harder. Again, a lot of ways you can do this question, but the way that I do it is I like to get rid of all the decimal places to begin with. So we have one decimal place here. We have one decimal place here. I can just multiply both of these by 10 to get rid of the one decimal place. Just remember, you have to multiply by the same number in division. You can't multiply here by 100 and here by 10. You have to multiply them by the exact same number. So this is the exact same as 36 divided by nine and 36 divided by nine, you should be able to do that mentally. Anything from zero to nine or one to nine, you should know your calculations mentally in easier questions, at least not for like a really difficult one. 36 divided by nine is just four and that is the solution to this question. Let's go to question number 10 next. Question number 10 is what is 25% of 240. So 25% of 240. The first thing I'll do for a percentage question like this is I'll just convert this. A percentage means you divide by 100. Off means multiply. So we're just trying to do this calculation over here. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to try and reduce F possible reduce you can reduce on top like this or you can reduce across like that as zeros are the easiest thing to reduce to begin with so i can cancel this zero and this zero basically by dividing the top and bottom by 10. then i'm looking at the top and the bottom to see if i can cancel anything both of these are divisible by five so i'll divide by five that becomes a two and that becomes a five and then I can't reduce these further, but let me look at this and this because this is still in the top. This is in the bottom. Divide them both by two. So that's just a one. That becomes a 12. 
So now what am I left with if I simplify this? On the top, I just have five times 12. and the bottom, I just have one. Anything divided by one is the same thing. So essentially, this is just five times 12. What is five times 12? Well, let's do our multiplication for that. 12 times five, two times five is 10. Carry over one. One times five is five plus one is six. So 12 times five is 60. And that is my final solution to this question over here. That's the first 10 questions. We're halfway through the test. Let's go to the last 10 questions over there. As you can see, a lot of these are word problems as well. Let's start with question number 11. So we have a jacket that costs $80 and it's increased by 15%. What is the new price? So in a question like this, you know, the original price is $80. Let's find how much the price is increased by. The increase is just 15% off 80. That's just 15 divided by 100 times 80. You can cancel the two zeros. Can divide these two by five, so that turns into a two, that turns into a three. Can divide both of these by two, so that turns into a one, that turns into a four. Just left with three times four, which is 12. So the increase in price is 12. So to find the new price, I'm just going to take the original price, which was $80 and add the increase in price, which means that the new price is $92 for this question. Let's go to question number 12 next. A laptop originally cost $500 and is discounted by 20%. What is the sale price? So similar to the previous question, the first thing we will do is we'll find the discount, the discount is 20% of the original price, which is 500. Remember, discounts and increases are always based on the original amounts. In the later tests, we'll see harder questions where we have increases and discounts, but we're not given the original price. And again, those are much tougher questions. You wanna make sure you're good at these simpler questions first. That's just 20 divided by 100 times 500. So for this one, I can just cancel out two zeros and two zeros really quick. 20 times five, you should be able to do that mentally. 20 times five is just a $100 discount, which means that the sale price is just the original price minus the discount because we're getting a discounted price here. So it should be low, which makes the sale price as $400. All right, let's go to question number 13 next. Maria bought three packs of pencils with 12 pencils in each. She gave 14 pencils to a friend how many pencils does she have left? So let's think about how many pencils Maria originally has. She has three packs with 12 pencils in each. So in total, she's going to have 12 times three pencils, which you can do mentally, but if you did over here, two times three is six, one times three is three. So Maria originally has 36 pencils. She gave 14 to her friends. So I'm going to subtract the 14 she gave to her friends. Six minus four is two. Three minus two is two. This means that she has 22 pencils left at the end, which is the answer to this question. Let's go to question number 14 next. 
a car travels 180 miles in three hours, how far will it travel at seven hours at the same speed? So this is a speed distance time problem. I'm going to explain how to do it over here. So we know that speed equals distance divided by time. This is the speed distance time formula. In this question, we got a car travels 180 miles. So the distance is 180 and the time is three hours. 180 divided by three is 60 miles per hour. So this car is traveling at 60 miles per hour. How far will it travel in seven hours at the same speed? So if a car is traveling 60 miles per hour and it travels seven hours, again, I can use this speed distance time formula. I know that the speed is 60. I'm trying to find the distance now. And I know that the time given in the question is seven hours. So now I need to find the distance here. To find the distance, this is a bit of algebra, but this is something you got to know for the quantitative reason, reasoning algebra uh, test. So I'm going to explain to you here, if you want to solve for the distance, we have to cross multiply the denominator over to the other side. Division basically turns into multiplication when moving to the other side of an equation. So 60 times seven is going to equal to the distance. And then 60 times seven, you can either do that mentally or you can do it with doing a multiplication table here. Zero times seven is zero. Six times seven, you should know that mentally is just 42. The solution for this question is 420 miles is the distance that's traveled by this car. Okay, let's go to the next question, number 15. Number 15 is a money problem. Let me just grab another sheet really quick. So John has $150, he spent $45 on a book, 37 on a video game. How much money does he have left? Pretty simple money question over here. Again, you shouldn't expect to see questions this easy on your test, especially if you're trying to do really well, you know, get above an 80, 90%, you won't see something this simple. So the first thing is, let me find his total spend. His total spend is just 45 plus 37. Five plus seven is 12, carry on the one. Four plus three is seven, plus one is eight. So his total spend is $82. He had $150, how much does he have left? So we're doing subtraction there, 150 minus 82. I can't do zero minus two, so I'm going to borrow from this and turn that into a 10. 10 minus two is eight. I can't do four minus eight, so I'm going to cancel that one. It turns it to a zero and I'll borrow. 14 minus eight is just six. So John is going to have $68 left after buying the book and the video game. Let's go to 16 next, an H problem. Sam is four years older than his sister who is 12 years old. How old will Sam be in five years? Let's just start by finding Sam's new age. Sam's four years older than his sister who is 12 years. So that's just 12 plus four, which is 16 years. So Sam is 16 years old right now. How old will Sam be in five years 
want to find that I'm just adding five to Sam's current age, which will be 21 years. So five years from now, Sam will be 21 years old. Let's go to question number 17. Question number 17, we're solving. I'm gonna rewrite the question here. Actually, do I have space to solve it on that paper? Nah, I'll just do it on this one. So eight plus three times 10 minus four divided by two. So we're doing bed mass in this question. Bed mass says to always do brackets first. So I'll do 10 minus four inside the bracket first. That's eight plus three times six divided by two. After brackets, division is my next one. So that's gonna be eight plus three times six divided by two is just three. And then I will do my multiplication next, which is eight plus nine. And then finally, I will do my addition. Eight plus nine is 17. And that is my final answer for this question. Okay, let's go to question number 18. I'm gonna try and squeeze 18, 19, 20 in this little bit of space I have left here, but if I don't have enough space, I will go back to that paper. Question number 18 is adding mixed fractions. So in order to add mixed fractions, there's a couple of different ways to do it. And it would kind of depend on your multiple choice answer as well. But what you can do is you can add the whole numbers separately and you can add the fractions separately or you can convert it into uh, whole numbers and then into improper fractions and then add them. Personally, I'm going to do it the second way. And the reason I'm going to do it the second way is because then you can see all possible answers in terms of your multiple choice. So, let me rewrite the question over here. I'm gonna convert these to mixed fractions. To convert to mixed fractions, you just write the denominators exactly the same. The denominators will not change. To find the numerator, we just multiply these two numbers and then add the answer with the top. So three times two is six plus one is seven. And here five times one is five plus two is also seven. Now I need to add these two fractions. To add two fractions, remember the denominators have to be the exact same. To make these two numbers the same, my lowest common denominator is 15. And if you're struggling with questions of lowest common denominator, you want me to do a group of questions, let me know in the chat. I'll do an entire video based on this. This is again an easier question. There will be harder questions and harder tests later on as well. But between these two, my lowest common denominator is 15. But if you want an in-depth explanation on that, let me know, I'll make a separate video on it. Oops, and so five. So in order to make a three into a 15, I'm going to multiply it by five. I have to do the exact same thing on the top here. The turn of five into 15, I'll have to multiply by three do the exact same thing on the top over here. Continue this over here. So seven times five is 35 over 15. Seven times three is 21 over 15. And then if I add these two, 35 plus 21, and six and five, that's just 56 over 15. So if your set of answers was a bunch of mixed uh, Im improper fractions, just like this, you would do it using this method over here. It works pretty well. If your answer was a mixed number as well, you could just do two plus one is three. 
And then you can do one over three plus two over five. I'll do that on the side over here. So one over three plus two over five. Got to make a common denominator again. One times five is five. So five over 15 plus six over 15. Five plus six is just 11 over 15. So my final solution would be three, 11 over 15. We do 15 times three is 45 plus 11 is 56. We see that these two answers are exactly the same. One is just an improper fraction. The other is a mixed fraction. So the method you should choose depends on what you see as the choice in the multiple solution question. Next one is converting this decimal into a fraction in the simplest form. So to convert a decimal into a fraction, you count the number of decimal places, two decimal places in this question. So I can rewrite this as 75 over, I'll put a one here, and then the number of zeros here depend on the number of decimal places. So if I have two decimal places, I have two zeros here, which means it's 75 over 100. Now I need to simplify this. What can I divide both these numbers by? I can divide them both by five. So to divide them, if I divide them both by five, 75 divided by five is 15. If you can't do that mentally, do your long division for it. 100 divided by five is 20. Again, I can divide both of these numbers by five. 15 divided by five is three. 20 divided by five is four, and I can no longer reduce this. So that is my final answer to this question. And last question in this test, question number 20, round 567.89 to the nearest whole number. So if I wanna round this question to the nearest whole number, I'm looking at the first decimal point because you always have to look after what you're rounding. So if I'm looking at this, if this number is five or larger, I will round up. If it's four or smaller, I will round down. Because it's larger or equal to five, I have to round up. And if I'm rounding up, I have to add one to this number, which is 560. Eight, that would be my solution to this question over here. So that concludes this test. Again, remember the difficulty of this test is very, very easy. Do not go into your actual test thinking that it's going to be this simple. That is impossible. If you do that, you will end up probably failing the test if not getting somewhere around a 50%. Your goal is to be able to do all these questions perfectly yourself. And if you can do all of these perfectly, you can advance to a higher difficulty. This, like I said, I'm going to label as either easy or very easy. Um, difficulties will get harder and harder, but you want to be able to solve a hard test by yourself before going into that actual test if you plan on doing well. And like I said, I will be releasing a couple of videos over the next few days uh, of different difficulties. If you found a specific question difficult to understand and, and you want to, me to make a dedicated video with multiple examples of that type of question, let me know in the comments which question number you were struggling with and I will dedicate an entire video to that as well. If you found this content helpful, please hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.